Hi, I'm Jo from JH Leather and in this video I'll be showing you how to make this leather bifold wallet. Let's get started. Okay, so this is a make-along video to go uh, with this pattern pack that is available to purchase through my website and Etsy store. Um, in that, you will also get a little guide on what leathers to use. Um, so that is covered in there and not in the video. So first of all, you are going to want to print out your patterns. And so once you've printed them, it's probably a good idea to just stick them onto some cardboard. So I'm just using an old uh, cereal box here. I, it just makes them a bit more rigid uh, for when you are drawing around them onto your leather. And so once you've uh, glued your patterns onto your reinforcement card, uh, you can then uh, cut them out. And then you just want to trim the corners with a pair of scissors on the outer wallet. And then to cut the semicircle, I'm using a 19 millimeter circle punch. Um, you can use scissors if you haven't got that or your knife, um, just to make it um, a bit easier though. I use a round punch. And so once you get them cut out, you can now draw your patterns onto uh, your leather. So this is also my first video with my new um, camera stand for the uh, top down bird's eye view of what I'm doing so let me know what you think of that I've still got a few more bits to do um because obviously my head keeps getting in the way here uh especially when I'm cutting out um so I still got a few more uh tweaks to make but let me know what you think of the uh top down uh view of my work and if you like it and if that's something that you want to see more of um and I will get the setup uh dialed in for you And so once you've finished uh, drawing around your patterns, you now want to cut them out. Right, so again, we're just going to uh, get our pattern here for the interior wallet and then we're going to use our pencil just to draw that on where we want it and our 19mm circle punch just to punch that out. Okay, so once you've got everything cut out, we can then start edging. So we're just going to use our number one edge tool. Um, so on our wallet here on the interior we're going to have like a little sort of about three quarters of an inch um, exposed so you just want to do edge that little bit on that and then you're going to edge across the tops of all the little pockets and around the whole of uh, the grain side for your exterior part of the wallet and you can also mark that where um, on the pattern there's a little two little dots for where your stitching should start uh, if you mark those onto the other side, you can just edge that little bit there as well. And then you also want to edge across the tops of the sort of back of the pocket construction part. And then along one side of your um, decorative strip. 
uh, and then once you've done that you can then uh, stain and crease um, all your parts so we're just going to crease uh, the bits that we edged on um, for now um, because once we sort of get through and we chop um, we've sort of stitched things together uh, we will be sort of trimming things down and we can re-edge and crease stuff then Right, so once you've done uh, edging, uh, staining and creasing, we're going to start putting our uh, pockets uh, together. So there is like a half inch mark on the top of your square um, pattern, uh, which marks where the tops of the uh, little pockets will want to sit to. Uh, so you want to mark that on lightly and then we're going to use the 3 8 line on the pocket um, pattern to mark where we're going to stitch them to so what we're going to do is we're going to draw that on and then just roughly draw around them just so we can see where they're going to go to and then we can rough this up this is the texture and hide that i'm using so you don't necessarily need to do that on this one because the glue would um, stick to it fine uh, but if using a smooth hide it would be um, beneficial to do this just to uh, get the glue to stick a bit better And once you've done that, you can then glue your first pocket in place. So we're going to glue this on and then we're actually going to stitch mark it once it's glued on. And so once you've got the two, uh, well, the first pockets of each of the card slots on, you can then stitch mark um, along that 3 8 line. And then you want to stitch these in place. So we're going to double hand stitch this um, quite quickly just to get it on. And because uh, there's not any wear and tear really on this bit, you don't need to do a back stitch to lock it. You can just start uh, stitching straight on. But you will want to do a one and a half back stitch to lock the threads off at the end. Okay, so you're going to want to do this with both of uh, your pockets and then once we've done that, we can then get the second card slot uh, glued on. So I've also got a different glue um, applicator here. These are like the ones that you used to get in school for PVA. Um, but for this, they're ideal because um, they've got like that flat edge so you don't get as much glue everywhere um like you would do if you're using the brush that i normally use and so once you've got it stuck on again you can then stitch mark along that 3 8 line and then once you've done that you can then stitch these in place All right, so once you've got both of your uh, or two card slots on each of your pockets, uh, you're going to just uh, glue uh, the sort of front on for them. 
and then what we're going to do is we're actually going to trim um, these down. So the patterns I've made um, for you are about an eighth of an inch longer. So once we've got everything on and sort of stitched in place or glued, as it is the case for this final pocket cover, uh, we can then trim it all down so it's all nice and flush and square. And you can just tap them down with your hammer um, just to get these edges flat. And then what we're going to do is just going to put the uh, sort of square back pattern uh, onto uh, the assembled pieces and just trim them up to make them square. And you want to nick the corners on one side of each of these. Basically, you want a pair. Um, so you're going to do one first, and then you'll do the opposite on the other one. And you can edge number one across the bottom and on that one nicked uh, corner side. So because we want a pair, because they're going to go on opposite sides of the wallet. Um, so easy, do one, and then you can do the opposite on the other one, uh, if that makes sense. And then you can just quickly stain and crease those and then we are going to stitch mark along uh, sort of one or sort of the creased side um, just to get all these uh, bits together and so once you've drawn your stitch mark line you can then stitch mark along one side of these wallets And then you're going to double hand uh, stitch the pockets together on that one side. Uh, once you've stitched um, those two sides of your uh, pockets, you can then glue them on to the interior uh, wallet piece. And you just want to line them up and get them glued on nice and straight there. So it can take a little bit of fiddling uh, just to make sure they're nice and flush to the pattern. Uh, once you're happy, you can then tap these down with your hammer. Uh, 
And then what we're going to do next is just trim any excess um, up. And then we're just going to draw a line with our uh, dividers across the top of our pocket and we're going to stitch mark across these next. Okay, so once you've stitch marked these, you can then double hand stitch across the tops of your pockets. So once you stitch across the tops of both of your uh, pockets on the uh, inner wallet part, you can then uh, stitch mark around uh, your outer wallet. So there are two um, dots um, on your patterns at the bottom, which are a guide for where your stitching needs to be. You might need to adjust this depending on how you've cut out your pieces. And so, because um, basically we just want them to stitch just like a little bit over the edge around next to that. Um, sort of semicircle cutout, um, so you might need to make them a little bit wider or narrower depending on how you've cut uh, your patterns out and how your wallet is looking at that time. Uh, so but once you've got that, you can then stitch mark all the way around your wallet. And then we're going to glue our decorative strip in place. If you're not using the decorative strip, there are two other uh, points at the side of um, your backing pattern. Um, so this is where you want your stitching to stop and basically it will just stitch so you've got one stitch um, over the edge of your inner wallet. Um, like I said, this is only a decorative strip so you don't necessarily have to use it. Um, anyway, so once you've got it all stitch marked and you've got where you want your um, strip to go, you can rough the edges up um, on, your, on the, the uh, flesh side of your um, outer wallet um, just to get this to stick a bit easier and then you can stick your decorative strip on again there is an overhang on this which we will trim off once we've finished stitching and then you can start to um, put your inner wallet um, inside um, so you want to make sure that this um, decorative strip if night is nice and straight across the top here and then um, glue around the edge is for where your inner wallet will sit now when we're putting this in we're going to do one side and sit that flush and then you want to actually bend the wallet around because the inner wallet is slightly smaller to allow for uh, the bend in the wallet when it is closed so as you can see i'm going to stick one side in here first nice and flush to the edges and then we're going to slightly fold the wallet around so it's flush with the other side as well. And once you've happy you've got everything stuck in place, you can then tack it down uh, or tap it with your hammer. 
you can also use tax if you want to um, to hold everything properly secure uh, but generally I find with just the glue it is um, that will be enough to hold it in place and then once we've done that we are going to double hand stitch all the way around our wallet so I'm going to start from sort of the bottom and stitch around um, and try and get it with one thread I think I still do need to um, change my thread but if you're a lot taller than me you might not to uh, <laughs> you might not need to um, and if you're just doing sort of your wallet without the decorative strip across the top you can do either side um, and you should be able to get that all done in one thread length And once you stitch all the way around your wallet, you can then start trimming things, um, trimming the excess off that uh, strip at the top and also on the uh, sort of bottom corners where we cut them square in our patterns, just because it's easier to get everything flush if you trim it off afterwards. Uh, so once you have trimmed everything, you can then number one edge around the whole of the inside of your wallet. And then we're also going to sand the edges. So I've just got some just general sandpaper here that I've wrapped um, around my bone folder just to make it a bit easier to hold and make sure that it's flat. Uh, and this way we will get a really good edge um, like stain on our wallet um, because everything's going to be flush. Um, so for wallets and stuff like this, this is what I would do to make sure your edges are all level and you can get a really good shine um, doing this. And once you sanded everything down, you can then go around and restain the edges. And then again here you can see that I've just folded my bone around or the cloth around that my bone folder just because it's easier to get um, a good shine uh, on your wallet that way and so once you're done that you're then going to recrease the whole of your wallet so you're going to do the inside um, as well as the um, outside of your wallet And then the final thing you might need to do is with a bone folder just um, poke it around the inside of the pockets just if there's any excess glue um, sort of holding the pocket down there this will just um, sort of break that off um, and get it so you can fit all your cards um, in nicely. So uh, that is how you make the bifold wallet uh, from the patterns that are available for sale on my website and Etsy store which are linked below and uh, in the video. So if you like the video please click the thumbs up button and subscribe for more videos and tutorials and I shall see you in the next one. Bye!